Swift Tech, Cool IT, Cooler Master, and AMD have all attracted the legal ire of liquid cooling supplier Ace Attack, who hold two relevant patents to liquid cooler design, specifically pertaining to closed loop or all-in-one liquid cooler design. And we recently posted a few exclusive stories about this, including an update on Ace Attack's current posturing against AMD. Ace Attack issued a cease and desist order to AMD demanding that the sale of the R9 Fury X halt immediately. They also issued a CND to Gigabyte over the GTX 980 Water Force card using a closed loop liquid cooler for its thermal dissipation as well. And this video should serve as a means to recap everyone on the history to this point, talk about what those patents mean, what they protect intellectually, and cover the whole history of legal action between Ace Attack, Cool IT, Cooler Master, what looks to be AMD in the future. It's all, it's very intriguing to follow and there's a lot of history behind this specific segment of the industry. So that's what we're here to talk about today. The lawsuits and CND orders have been going on for years now with Ace Attack successfully knocking Swift Tech's H220 out of the US market in 2013, winning a banishment on CMI USA liquid cooling products from the US marketplace and receiving settlements from CLC competitor Cool IT. But who is Asatech and what is the history of these legal matters leading to today's news? Asatech is a liquid cooling supplier or OEM, original equipment manufacturer, and it is their job to supply a finished product to the manufacturers with which you are all familiar. That would include Corsair, actively making several of the coolers for them, NZXT with the X61, X41, Thermal Take with the big water coolers, and even Intel with some of their own liquid coolers, and previously, and this one is important, AMD for the R9 295X2 that was actually supplied by Asetech in cooperation with AMD. So this is a company that's supplying the underlying liquid cooler to the products that you are ultimately buying. And we have a separate video that talks about all of this if you're curious to learn more, but the manufacturers do still have input, so they're not just putting a sticker on a product, they do actually provide some level of input. And this is part of the normal ecosystem for the industry. Cool IT is another one of these suppliers, Cooler Master, another supplier, and there are plenty of other ones. This table was created for our separate article and video entitled, Who Makes Your Liquid Coolers? and shows exactly who is making the end product that you're buying. In this case, we see that Asetech largely dominates the name brands and is responsible for supplying popular CLCs like the Corsair H100i GTX and NZXT X61 CLCs. Cooler Master is another major supplier and outside of Liquid is best known for its provision of Intel and AMD stock air CPU coolers. Cooler Master's liquid coolers include the Sidon, Nepton, and Glacier series, but Glacier is actually a rebadge, interestingly, of the SwiftTech H220, something we'll get into momentarily in a lot more depth. A couple of other suppliers exist in the field, like Apaltech, who work with Enermax and Silverstone, and Cool IT, responsible for Corsair's H60, H80i, H100i, and a couple of other cooling devices. Right, all the players established, let's roll into the patents and what they mean for this case. Asetech holds two US patents that are relevant to this story, and those patent numbers are 8240362 and 8245764. There's another one we'll talk about in a bit. And these were awarded on the priority dates of November 7th, 2003 and May 6th, 2005, respectively. The entirety of Ace Attack's recent legal battles can pretty much be boiled down to these two patents within the enthusiast CLC market. There's one more, again, that will come up shortly. And these are what we'll be looking at going forward in terms of the infringing products and allegations of infringement and things of that nature. At a top level, these patents ultimately boil down to the specific implementation of a pump oriented atop the cold plate all housed within a single block for placement directly atop the silicon chip. In its patents, Asetech holds the rights to the pump on cold plate invention for both CPU and GPU cooling and has been recently awarded with additional patents in China and 11 European countries, which will become a topic for discussion in a moment as we move into Swift Tech. Asia Vital Components, or AVC, is another major CLC OEM and on September 30th, 
2014, ABC challenged the validity of Azatex patents, but was dismissed on February 27, 2015 by a federal judge in the U.S. The court concluded that ABC had not presented a justiciable case and thus dismissed that case. And this will become a trend for Azatex patents where they successfully defend them going forward, as you'll see in our timeline in a moment. The patents have been used as the foundation for several legal actions over the past few years. And recapping that history, we start with liquid cooling manufacturer Azatech and the competitor Cool IT. Back in 2003, Azatech's founder and CEO first began documenting the engineering that would become patents 362, 764, and 768. A few years later, Azatech became the first liquid cooling manufacturer to sell an all in one liquid cooling product, which it named Low Cost Liquid Cooling or LCLC, an exclusive at the time for PC cooling. This was the first of its kind on the enthusiast market or enterprise markets. And shortly later in 2006, Asatech applied for international patents at the US Patent and Trademark Office. During this time, both Asatech and competing CLC manufacturer Cool IT gained popularity and rocketed to the top in the enthusiast and enterprise segment. 2007 sees Cool IT's invention of the fluid heat exchanger that provides a split flow for liquid cooling devices and will later become patented. In August 2012, Asetech was granted the patents it requested in 2006. Those three patents would catalyze the next three years of legal action as pursued by the company. Almost immediately following the receipt of these three patents, Asetech filed a lawsuit against CLC OEM Cool IT for alleged infringement on its design. And the root of this infringement accusation can be drawn to the pump's orientation atop the cold plate, something that Asetech did first and for which it was awarded these patents. On January 31st, 2013, Asetech launched a patent infringement case against the significantly larger Cooler Master USA or CMI USA, who had ventured into CLC territory with all-in-one coolers. Cooler Master Sidon, Neptun, and later its Glacier series would become targets of these infringement allegations. And on June 7th, 2013, Swift Tech received a CND letter from Asetech's lawyers. Asetech alleged that the H220 all-in-one liquid cooler infringed upon patents 362 and 764, demanding that Swift Tech halt sales and import of its H220 in US markets immediately. Swift Tech, shortly following this, also in 2013, complied with this request and pulled its H220 from the market. In October of 2013, just months after Swift Tech received the CND from Asetech, Cooler Master USA announced its Glacier series of all-in-one liquid coolers. Under a new name, these coolers were actually introduced as rebadges of the Swift Tech H220 supplied to Cooler Master by Swift Tech. Our informed speculation is that Cooler Master likely granted indemnity to Swift Tech for their supply of the H220 thus allowing the cooler to again be sold in the US under a new brand and name and expanding Cooler Master's product line. Well, let's look back a minute at Cool IT. So if you remember there was an Asetech filed lawsuit against Cool IT in 2012. At this point, we're currently in 2013, that is still going on. Rolling into 2014 in June, Cool IT issued its own lawsuit against Asetech alleging that Asetech had been guilty of infringing upon a split flow fluid heat exchanger, which if you recall back to 2007, was a device that Cool IT had invented. In 2014, Cool IT just received its patent for this device and immediately launched its lawsuit against Asetech as what we would imagine to be a retaliation for Asetech's own lawsuit against Cool IT. So at this point in time, both of those are still ongoing. Cooler Master is creating Swift Tech products with a new badge and Swift Tech has pulled some of its coolers from the US market under Asetech CND orders. Two months later, in August 2014, Asetech published an eager press release indicating a quote, design win with an undisclosed OEM customer for a graphics liquid cooling product. This was clearly AMD as Nvidia had no known liquid products at this time and looking back in time, never officially made any. Those would be out by now. And that became the R9 Fury X, becoming a 
point of contention in the near future. September 12, 2014, a month later, rumors and leaked photos of initial Radeon faceplates for a future GPU revealed CLC mounting brackets and all but confirmed that the Fury X, which we at that point in time didn't know the name of, would be a liquid-cooled AMD product. Come December of 2014, a jury found Cooler Master guilty on several counts of patent infringement against Asetek. Judge Tigar imposed a 14.5% royalty on Cooler Master USA's to-date sales of affected CLCs, totaling more than $400,000 in damages owed to Asetek. This marks the first major public victory for Asetek. Rolling into this year, 2015, Cool IT and Asetek agreed to settle that first lawsuit that Asetek imposed on Cool IT, and they settled in February with Cool IT slated to owe an amount that had been yet undisclosed at the time to Asetek. This is where we as a website began to closely follow the story, writing our first major piece about the legal battles on February 8th, 2015. Cool IT CEO and CTO Jeff Lyon emailed us directly to comment on the story, stating, quote, I read your article and thought I'd add some clarity. I wanted to let you know that there will be no disruption in our supply of cooling systems to Corsair or any of our other customers as a result of settlement with Asetek. In actual fact, it has not been decided if there will be any damages due to Asetek at all since there is still no indication of infringement. The fact is the settlement will have no impact on our business at all, aside from our management team no longer having to waste time, energy, and money on this silly lawsuit. A few months later, Cool IT completed its payment to Asetek of $1.9 million for that settlement. In April, a California federal judge denied CMI USA's attempt to invalidate Asetek's cooling patents for, quote, obviousness. Moving forward rapidly now, September 23rd of 2015 sees another Asetek victory over Cooler Master. Asetek was granted an injunction against CMI USA following CMI's failure to pay on the royalties owed, increasing the royalty fee from 14.5% to 25.375% from January 1 and forward. CMI was also barred from sale of its infringing CLCs in U.S. markets, and CMI USA is today appealing this decision. AMD launched its Fury X in June, but was found to be using a Cooler Master CLC for its thermal dissipation. We discussed the engineering and design of this cooling solution very heavily in our Fury X review if you want more detail on how that's all assembled. No Asetek coolers were found on Fury X cards. We're caught up to the last few months now at this point, and on December 5th, 2015, we at Gamers Nexus received a direct statement from Asetek that the company had issued cease and desist orders to Gigabyte for its GTX 980 Water Force card and AMD for its R9 Fury X card. Asetek demanded that AMD cease sales of the Fury X immediately, alleging that the Fury X infringes upon the same patents that Cooler Master just lost to in its own case, where it now owes Asetek a significant sum of money. AMD then contacted Gamers Nexus with its own statement on the legal matters at hand, and we've reproduced that on the screen here. The statement reads, We are aware that Ace Attack has sued Cooler Master. While we defer to Cooler Master regarding the details of the litigation, we understand that the jury in the case did not find that the Cooler Master heatsink currently used with the Radeon Fury X infringed on any of Ace Attack's patents. Basically, AMD deferred to Cooler Master. A few days later, Cooler Master Taiwan reached out to us at GamersNexus.net and provided its own statement. CM initially supplied us with a statement that was almost partially misleading, whether it was intended or not, claiming that Asetek had dismissed its case against Cooler Master entirely. The statement also suggested that the Fury X card had been cleared of infringement, but in reality, the Fury X hadn't even been included in the suit against CMI USA because it didn't yet exist. It wasn't until several pressing emails later that we reached a better understanding with one another, and you can find all those emails published in their entirety in our article linked in the description below. But on screen now is the official statement from Cooler Master Taiwan, and this is the big differentiator here that we had to get out of them for their later statements not provided freely in the first statement. 
Cooler Master that reached out to us is Cooler Master Taiwan, not Cooler Master USA or CMI USA. Now these are all related companies. CMI USA sells the liquid coolers and other products that Cooler Master makes and CMI USA sells them in America. Ace Attack originally levied its infringement lawsuit against Cooler Master in Taiwan, but dismissed that case when it later found that CMI USA is the party or entity independently responsible for the sale of the CLCs that Cooler Master sells in the US. So that's where that statement comes from. That's why they say it was dismissed when that is technically correct to us as, as enthusiasts, as journalists, as readers and viewers. The statement that the claims were dismissed does sound a bit like Ace Attack dismissed all claims when in fact that is not true. They pursued a different segment of Cooler Master. CM also noted that there are significant design differences with the Fury X. We pressed them for details, but very understandably, they are unable to provide those at this time beyond some very ambiguous basics because this is an ongoing legal matter. They can't speak too much to journalists. Uh, they've got to go through lawyers, obviously. But the one point that was brought up is that there are separable chambers for the Fury X CLC, and that likely is indicating the chambers used for VRM and VRAM cooling specifically, which the Acetec products don't do. However, Acetec's patent is on the pump on cold plate design, which is used in the Fury X CLC. So it's something that will have to be battled out either in court or settled or whatever. As of right now, there's only a CMD against AMD from selling its R9 Fury X. AMD has rather expectedly opted to continue selling its Fury X and until a point at which Ace Attack decides it is going to further its legal action and pursue either Andy or Cooler Master for this next infringement case, the Fury X will remain on the market so long as its normal supply allows. Now we did some further research and found shipping logs documenting delivery of Ace Attack coolers on the Fury X card to AMD, which would suggest that AMD had originally planned to at least investigate using Ace Attack they had used Ace Attack before, but instead opted for what was likely a cheaper solution from Cooler Master, with whom Ace Attack had been publicly legally engaged during the period that this contract likely would have been negotiated. So that brings us up to date on all the legal conflicts. We don't yet know how AMD, Ace Attack, and Cooler Master will settle these differences, but it is very clear that in the least, the Fury X is implicated in some ways because there were products shipped to AMD for use on the Fury X by Ace Attack. So there was some contact there, and one would imagine that Ace Attack would make very clear, as they had done publicly, that there is an infringement case with Cooler Master. So that's hopefully answering the question that we've seen on forums of why is AMD getting dragged into this? They just bought a bulk order of product. How are they held responsible? And that's all documented in this video in our article linked in the description below where we basically talk about and have talked about the process from the past till now of Ace Tech defending its patent against Cooler Master, Cool IT, and others. And it's dragging AMD into the mix because AMD potentially, and this is probably what Ace Tech might think, knowingly opted to use a competing product when Ace Attack had obviously delivered a solution to AMD for use in its Fury X. So that's everything as we understand it right now. There's a lot more going on to these cases and we'll just have to wait and see how it develops and what happens. I'm not really here to comment on whether I think the patents are valid or legitimate or useful or not. That is certainly up to you guys to talk about in the comments. It's not what I'm here for though. I'm just here to recap it all. and. The courts have already begun ruling on those types of things. So if you want to read the cases, they are online publicly and freely. That is it for this video. If you like this type of coverage, if you like the depth that we go into and independence that we hold, then please hit the link in the description below for the article. Hit the Patreon link in the post roll video to help us directly. And just comment, share the video, stuff like that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.